All right, folks. Uh, I think we're entering the stage of American decline where things get rapidly worse, and we, we I think we're going to get to the point to where most people start to recognize what I've been saying for a few years, and that things have to get much, much worse before they get better. People have to lose hope in order for us to improve, because as long as people have hope of things getting better from where we are, that we're going to bottom out uh, where we are today, that, you know, today, uh, September 7th, the year of our Lord, 2023, um, you know, is the bottom, and, and we can try and improve from here. That's not going to happen. Things have to get a lot worse before any of that changes. <clears throat> and a, a good indication of how much worse things are getting is the sentencing of Enrique Torrio, uh, a Florida resident, I believe the son of uh, Cuban refugees, uh, who was the leader of the Proud Boys after Gavin McGinnis stepped down. Um, you know, it really... Uh, someone who was not in D.C. on January the 6th. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. He wasn't even there. And they gave him 22 years in prison. He literally did nothing because they arrested him on January the 5th because they said, well, we think you're going to stir up trouble tomorrow. And so now, retroactively, they're blaming him for uh, the fake PSYOP that occurred on January the 6th. And so he gets 22 years in prison. Now, uh, the major candidates uh, are silent on this from what I've seen. Um, in my experience, though, in general, it seems like Vivek has been the most vocal uh, in support of the January 6th victims. Um, Trump said very little. DeSantis said very little. Although I think I heard that DeSantis, like on Newsmax or something, where nobody would, would hear him, <laughs> said something about Enrique Torrio last night, which I guess that's, that's good because, you know, Enrique Torrio is a Florida resident, so the governor should have something to say about that. But by and large, I think these people understand that they've been abandoned um, by everyone. There is no hope for them, and they will not be. They're not, uh, they're not special. They're not unique. The folks who were in D.C. on January 6th, or in the case of Enrique, not in D.C. Uh, this is a proof of concept. They're going after these folks first. And then there will be lots of people, uh, such as uh, Ricky Vaughn, <clears throat> I guess known legally as Douglas Mackey, who will be persecuted uh, for their speech moving forward. And they will get sentenced to prison for wrong thing. This is going to become common. Um, you're going to have more people like, uh, you know, your boomer con uncle who gets his door kicked in by the FBI and gets absolutely perforated uh, like that uh, fellow in Utah who, uh, from what we heard, uh, he was, I mean, he was an old man that used a walker and was on oxygen. And the FBI thought, you know, he was a real threat uh, to, uh, to Joe Biden's safety. So they kicked in his door and uh, you know, pumped him full of lead. I mean, hell, they do that to cooperating witnesses in the whole January 6th investigation. And so now that the war on terror has completely come home, um, they're going to have to keep broadening this because this is how you get more funding. What the FBI is trying to do right now is uh, demonstrate <clears throat> and play up this idea of domestic terrorism and they'll say look look at all these people we're locking up they're going to increase the crime statistics um, because all of these people in the fbi crime report uh will go down as domestic terrorists and they'll say look domestic terrorism um you know if you look at prosecutions are up 500 percent so obviously this is a very big problem we need a much bigger budget so that we can hunt these people down and then they're going to just keep you know putting more and more <clears throat> into this so that uh, they can get more and more resources from the federal budget. And so it used to be, uh, you know, Arab teenagers in countries you had never heard of uh, who were um, the victims of American largesse and uh, um, bureaucratic mission creep. 
Now it's going to be you, your neighbor, uh, your relatives, and people are not going to wake up to this anytime soon. People are not going to wake up when we are presented with one choice in the 2024 election, when it becomes mathematically impossible for Trump to win because they just take him off the ballot arbitrarily because they're going, they can just do that, just like they can just throw these people in prison, steal their lives. Um, just like they can walk into a random old man's house and pump him full of lead. That's not a crime. Nobody there is considered a murderer. Those guys go home to their families at the end of the day, and they say, oh, Honey, guess what I did today? I got to, uh, uh, I got to absolutely um, eviscerate the body of a defenseless old man. It was so cool. You should have smelled the blood. No, things will have to get a lot worse, and they'll have to stay bad for a very long time uh, until... Uh, things are so bad for so long that people can't remember mm, when they ever felt safe in their own homes. And once we get to that point, maybe some dissent, real dissent, will start to fester uh, amongst the normies. And it will become uh, somewhat difficult for the uh, regime to continue uh, in the same manner. But we're a long way away from that. Regimes like this, if they're financially healthy, can go on for decades and decades and decades. Um, thankfully, our regime is not financially healthy, uh, but our finances are rather um, difficult to interpret. It's unclear uh, just how long the U.S. will be able to continue operating on a uh, on a basis which is unconstrained from a budgetary perspective how much can they stretch the dollar uh, before it actually has a real impact uh, on uh, our global position how much can our global position uh, decline before it has an effect on the dollar i think we're entering a time in which smart people in america uh, will be keeping their heads down, and those who um, really uh, draw too much attention to themselves will not be able to, you know, survive in a, you know, in a relatively free state. They're not going to make it into uh, the next better era with their freedom intact. And so I don't know how bad things will ultimately get. I don't know how broad, how wide of a net they're going to eventually be casting. Um, my gut feeling says that you know, literally going after half the country is not feasible, uh, just from a mathematics standpoint. You don't have enough, you don't have enough resources uh, to try and lock up that many people in a gulag. But that would be, that would be their ultimate goal. And so, they're going to just start with the. Uh, the loudest voices start silencing them and just working their way down the list. You know, it's kind of whoever they can come up with the easiest excuse to persecute. Um, they will um, go out of their way to make sure that they can just lock them up. And, you know, when you have a, a country that is decided in close elections, you don't have to lock up that much of the population in order to maintain um, sufficient control. You don't even have to lock up all the uh, Republican politicians. Most of those people should be allies of the regime, as is currently the case. There are uh, very few Republicans in Congress or in, uh, you know, at the state level who could be viewed as enemies of the regime and of its mm, its newfound lust for the blood of innocence. And even that is not a correct phrase, um, because the blood of innocence is not a, is, it's not a new desire. It's which innocence? It used to be that they went after innocent people in the Middle East. That has been the target for the last mm, 20 plus years, 20, 30 years, if you want to go back to 91. 
But now they just want to go after innocent Americans. Most Republicans in Congress would be plenty happy to go along with this. Um, sure, it would mean that they can't, you know, ever get, regain control of either House of Congress. But uh, for the case, you know, in the case of leadership, um, they could have a cushy position. So, you know, I mean, it would be somewhat liberating knowing that they don't really have to try in elections anymore. They can just sort of um, give some uh, blasé uh, <clears throat> rebuttal <laughs> when the when the ruling party brings up bills. They could talk about how, you know, hey, I, I think that we should have a, you know, a 3% cut in the top marginal tax rates. Meanwhile, uh, you know, 10 to 15% of their voter base uh, is, ends up in prison or in work camps or something of the like. And if you think about this giant prison system that we've got in this country, if they just, uh, you know, let crime sort of run hot, <clears throat> And they stop throwing as many criminals in these prisons, and they start mm, letting these prisons fill up with uh, political dissidents. They've got a lot of room, and and we know that our government loves to build more prisons, and so this would give them an excuse to do that. And just in case any real dissidents were to be elected to public office, um, you know, even uh, via the, the uh, Republican Party. Uh, those few dissident politicians uh, could be, uh, you know, persecuted and locked up um, under this same sort of system. Just charge anyone you don't like with sedition or seditious conspiracy. You know, if it's a politician and he has supporters, well, you know, his, the, his very campaign could be considered a seditious conspiracy. And you just lock them up the way that, uh, you know... Uh, not just the January Sixers, but now Peter Navarro, uh, former member of the Trump administration, and uh, Trump himself, likely, uh, are going to be locked up. This is all proof of, proof of concept stage, but they're not going to introduce these tools and then put them away and forget that they have them. Why would you do that? If they exercise this level of control, and they're willing to do it to Trump. They're willing to do it to regular people who, you know, could potentially vote differently in the next election. Just because they voted for Trump in 2020 doesn't mean that they, um, you know, may not be persuaded to vote for someone else in 2024. Well, now, um, you know, they're not going to vote for anybody because they're convicted felons. They've lost the right to vote and they'll be in prison anyway. And that is, uh, you know, another great advantage of persecuting your enemies. Convicts in America usually uh, don't have the right to vote ever again. Some states you can get the right back, but it, uh, <clears throat> it can be difficult. It, it really depends. And so these people um, will essentially just be removed from the electorate. Persecute anyone who votes the way you don't like, and that's a pretty easy way to make sure that they can't vote that way anymore. So eventually they will hit a point in which they've gone too far, because currently we, we've not hit it. Uh, prosecuting the January Sixers who did nothing wrong, um, that wasn't seen as a limit. Uh, shooting Ashley Babbitt, that wasn't a limit for people. Uh, prosecuting Trump is not a limit for people. Prosecuting uh, members of the Trump administration like Peter Navarro, that's not a limit for people. We're not there yet. Uh, America is tolerating this pretty well. They tolerated COVID, after all. They tolerated vaccine mandates. They tolerated mask mandates. They tolerated you're not allowed to leave your house until the governor says so. They tolerated having, uh, you know, multi-generational family businesses destroyed um, by executive order. There were restaurants and stores in New York City that were open for over 100 years. Gone. Nobody will ever see him again. And nobody complained. No one regrets that. You know, it just is what it is. And so next time, instead of it being mm, uh, family businesses, it could just be family members, individual people who are just unpersoned, spirited away, disappeared. And so it's only a question of how much of that they can get away with uh, before it becomes untenable. Frankly, you know, I've leaned in the direction of thinking that the Americans would be less tolerant than they have been. And so I'm not going to lean that way anymore. I'm going to bet now 
people probably tolerate an awful lot of that. So, with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.